G.G. Blankies, since 2011, presents on Blog Talk Radio, Musings with Steve and Teresa. G.G. Blankies are baby blankets and toddler blankets for many and all. Call 740-727-1684 and talk with Teresa about the many different designs that she has available. Now on to the show. The April 24th, we will be changing times. So look back into the past. A little comparison between then and now of our gadgets and gizmos. So, uh, okay. Uh, put your page over here a second. Put How much time we got? 30 20, 22 seconds. 22 seconds. All right. seconds. Okay, I got something on that. I got something on that. Got something on that. <laughs> Pre-production on that. problem. <laughs> you should move like in five seconds. Something on this. Okay. Three, you ready? Two, hey, it's coming. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Our show is captured and linked to YouTube. The Programs are listed in the archives of both Blog Talk Radio and YouTube video. You can watch it as well as listen. Links are found on Facebook. We refer to the efforts as musings of Steve and Teresa, and the shows are archived as such. Phone-in number will be presented later in the program to have paper and pen ready. We welcome your opinions during our discussion. I'm Steve, a co-host. I'm Teresa, the other co-host. We are here to enlighten, entertain, and inform about issues we think are important. Uh, We want positive people to think how positive actions make positive people. Positively. Positively. (laughs) Uh, Terry, you got a beautiful blankie here today. Uh, The the, uh, sunflowers remind me of of the backyard. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. This is a sunflower, of course. And this one has blue as a background, and I put uh, a matching blue background on it and uh, encased it in the yellow ribbon. And uh, it's one of my favorites. And I, I try to make a blankie so that it doesn't get dirty so fast. Yeah, it has a yellow background or border, but uh, it'll still wash up quite easily in the back. Kind of dirt resistant. I try to use cotton and all natural fibers. Well, that, that certainly is, is uh, a delightful looking uh, blankie. Yep. And sunflowers, I like it in the backyard. Like I said, in the backyard when the squirrels and everything are trying to uh, get to the seeds from the 10-foot sunflower plant. I like watching them grow. Sunflowers are my favorite flowers. And they do come in all sizes, shapes, and colors. <laughs> and anyone wanting to join our discussion can call us at 347-308. 8409. You'll be next in line. Again, that's 347 308 8409. Okay, technology, science, and inventions have progressed to an accelerated rate during the 100 years of the 20th century, more so than any other century, we think. <laughs> so far. <yeah. laughs> we began the 20th century with infancy of airplanes, automobiles, and radios, and then those inventions dazzled us with their novelty and, and wonder. We end the 20th century with spaceships, computers, cell phones, and wireless internet, all being technologies we can't take for granted. Yeah. First we start out in the 1900s, uh, the first 10 years of the, of the 20th century. Remember, we're now in the 21st. Uh, found lots of new inventions. We have the Zeppelin, uh, escalator, and the camera. And I believe Steve has a little more information on that. You yeah, that, that's Zepp- what a Zeppelin was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a Zeppelin was a uh, lighter than air rigid aircraft. Uh, was built by uh, the uh, Luft Schiffbra Zeppelin Company, owned by Count uh, von Zeppelin, and. Uh, <laughs> They, they did, flew their first untethered rigid airship, LZ-1, on July the 2nd, 1900, near Lake Constance in Germany, had five passengers. Maybe we should tell them what it, because we okay. need a description. It was a big, giant uh, bag it was of a, helium. A cro- cro- hydrogen. <laughs> hydrogen. Cloth-covered dirigible, which was the prototype big of many million. subsequent models, had an aluminum structure, 17 hydrogen cells, and two 15-horsepower Daimler internal combustion engines turning two propellers. 
It was about 400 Pull feet long, thing. 38 feet in diameter, had a hydrogen gas capacity of uh, almost 400,000 cubic feet. During its first flight, it flew about um, uh, six kilometers or three and a half miles in 17 minutes and reached a height of 1,300 feet. Uh, they Very high. <laughs> needed more power and better steering and experienced technical problems during the first flight, as, as yeah. why they call it a test flight. Uh, they improved the, the design clear up into World War I, uh, where they built 67 Zeppelins that uh, uh, they used in, in the war combat. They bombed uh, England with it. Uh, no, the, the Zeppelin that most everybody knows about is the von Hin uh, Hindenburg. The Hindenburg. But and the hydrogen that, was highly flammable. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Hindenburg was... Uh, number 129 in their ships so they built 129 of them before they got to the the Hindenburg and one after it the LZ-130 Graf Zeppelin II uh, was the finest airship ever built <laughs> uh, went out in 1928 and it flew for 10 years All right. 590 flights 144 ocean crossings and then it came to 1936 and landed at New Jersey <laughs> airport <laughs> and, and made infamy or, or whatever <laughs> It blew up and, and, uh, and that was the end burned. of using the helium. And that, the that was pretty hydrogen <laughs> filled bags for yeah. flying. The, uh, but while, while, while we're talking about the uh, old, old times, there uh, we have uh, a couple of, of stories here that uh, he found some uh, jokes from that time period. Now, humor has changed a little, but uh, not that much. It they, uh, still deals with things that people do every day. And you, did you find one? Yeah, that there uh, uh, a noted humorist once spent a few weeks with a tribe of Western Indians. Now remember, this is 1900 humor. Uh, uh, on his return, he was asked concerning his experiences. One question was, "Did you ever taste any dog feast stew?" "Yes," was the mel melancholy reply. "I dated it twice. Once when it went down, and once when it came up." <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, no wonder it's old humor. Old humor, yeah. Now you you were talking about uh, uh, escalators there. Uh, an escalator is a, a conveyor type transport moving device stairs. that moves people. It, it's a moving staircase with steps that move up and down and a conveyor belt. Uh, the first patent relating to the escalate escalator like machine was granted <laughs> in 1859 to uh, for a steam driven unit. Uh, the moving stairs or inclined elevator, as he called it, uh, Jesse Reno, got a patent in 1895, and uh, they exhibited the novelty ride at Coney Island. Uh, the <laughs> <Ride. laughs> Yeah, the escalator, as we know, it was later redesigned by Charles Seaberg in uh, 1897. He created the escalator word and uh, uh, got hooked up with Otis Elevator Company, produced the first commercial elevator at the Otis factory in New York. And that is very boring, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I once had an incident with an escalator. This, I think, could be kind of funny. I was younger. I was about 14, 15. I was at the mall with my aunt. And I was horsing around. and didn't pick up my feet when it came off. And it grabbed, I had rubber-soled shoes, and it grabbed my shoe and tore the sole off the shoe. Big hunk. It was like, wow, if that had been my toe. The mom bought me a new pair of shoes, but I was... <laughs> well, that, that, that was one of the original problems with the escalator, is how to keep people out of the machinery. Yeah. Uh, also, you talked about George Eastman, the... Uh, yeah. who made made the history of Kodak and rolled photographic film. He introduced that uh, in, in uh, 1900. Uh, he, he had the first portable roll film uh, machine, went on to uh, uh, build the Kodak uh, factory and, and uh, change the history of the world. Let me go on a little more here. We're stuck still in the 1900. Well, let's go... A little past. 1901. We got 1901 when King Camp Gillette invents a double edged safety razor. And they used to be, it was just a straight blade. And the first radio receiver successfully received a radio transmission. Now that's a very important thing because then here, a year later, the U.S. Army installs their first radio telephones aboard the ships. So we can see where that came from. And uh, what do we got? Electric typewriter. Yeah, in 1901, 
Okay. Typewriter. Electric so, typewriter. Some, some uh, quick notes on there. The safety razor uh, is a shaving implement with a protective device positioned between the edge of the blade and the skin. Now, to maybe a lot of people here, they used a straight razor before. Now, my uncle used a straight razor. My dad never did. But but he, he took his long thing, strapped the blade uh, on, the, on the strap, and that was getting strapped. Was, was what they used to whip people yeah. with. They hung it on the doorknob and struck the razor and, and sharpened up the edge. And then he would uh, hold his head and cut. And if you jump bumped him, well, he would slice himself. And uh, now they yeah. have, have the electric ones you can take in well, the shower. That, well, yeah. <laughs> well th this safety razor had the head and, and uh, the double-edged blade that uh, you threw the blade away. That was the thing that he really came up with, was a, a portable way to use a, a, a replaceable blade. And uh, the Gillette and that company was, that was, was off and running. Forward. We wouldn't have prize fights if it wasn't for Gillette, right? Yeah, <laughs> really. And then one big thing that happened in 1903, aside from crayons, were invented. Yay, crayons. The Wright brothers invented the first airplane. And there was light bulbs and windshield wipers. And in 1904, tea bags were actually invented by accident. The guy shipped them in these little fancy bags, and uh, the people just stuck them in the teacup and tea bag. Uh, he, he was I making like samples, yeah. selling samples, and, <laughs> and it, that, the, the story I heard was he, he was doing it on his desk. He had this can of, of tea, and and he trying to put them in this little little silk, silk bags, and uh, uh, so he, he folded the paper around and, and, and fastened it, and sent them out and said, "Here's a sample of my Earl Grey and yeah. my green tea and, and so forth." And, them, and like the were. people were supposed to take them out of the out of the package and put them in their, their teapot and then strain the leaves out again. Yeah. And <laughs> they, they, they wrote back and said, send me some more of those bags. That's mm -hmm. neat. Yeah. And uh, if and you think about it now, you just pull a whole thing out and into the trash can. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And in 1904, we also got the answering machine and a comic book. 1905, we got Albert Einstein with his theory of relativity. You know, we all know what that is, right? <laughs> Yeah. And uh, what, you, Yellow Pages, Jukebox, it's amazing to find, I when I was doing the research for this, I was very amazed to find that so many things that we now take for granted were invented a hundred years ago, and that just people along the way have improved and improved and improved, and until now, look what we got now, wireless communication, spaceships, like we were saying. Well, they, they also had uh, the, the quackery medicine type stuff. Uh, uh, witnessed as the uh, 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 the grateful woman on the farm in Arkansas wrote to the vendors of the patent medicine. Now, uh, right about this time, there were the F, or, uh, I've forgotten the name, FCC, I think it was, uh, regulated, and, and they had to put the name of what's on the package on on the label. Yeah. And uh, uh, Lydia Pinkham was the one I remember. My grandmother Bond who was the head of the Women's Christian Temperance Union in Scioto <laughs> County, uh, was taking uh, Lydia Pinkham, and they announced that it was 85% alcohol. Now, regular, <laughs> regular whiskey is only 50%. 100% whiskey is only yeah, 50%. That, that so tonic, this, right? this, was, this tonic was almost raw uh, alcohol, and she'd taken two tablespoons uh, of Every three hours, and <laughs> felt fine. But yeah, she was I bet against she did. <laughs> just drinking. The uh, so the lady, lady wrote four weeks ago. I was so run down that I could not speak. <laughs> Spank the baby. After taking three bottles of your elegant elixir, I'm now able to thrash my husband. In addition to my other housework, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I got one here. I need to tell. I, this joke is just one of my favorites. I found today. Teacher's in a class, she says, she's talking about George Washington. He not only chopped down the father's cherry tree, but also admitted doing it. So, how do we know, how do we know that his father didn't punish him? One of the little students says, well, probably because George still had the axe in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, uh, little girl uh, was talking, uh, her mother was chewing her out for uh, uh, telling a lie. She was trying to explain to her uh, as, as you try to do about about lying and uh, so uh, she says uh, the uh, uh, it's naughty to tell truths untruths kitty those who do so never get to heaven and said don't you ever tell an untruth mommy 
No, dear, never. <laughs> oh, well, you'll be fearfully lonely up there, won't you, with only George Washington. <laughs> uh, there, you don't need a parachute to skydive. You only need a parachute to skydive twice. The one minute. <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, victory statue. Uh, uh, the winged victory has suffered during the centuries to an extent of losing its head and other less vital parts. When the Irish tourist was confronted by this battered figure in the museum, his guide had explained that this was the famous statue of victory. He surveyed the crumbled marble form with keen interest. He says, visit victory, is it? Well, boy, I don't like to see the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, today we presented insights as to our forefathers saw us changing times. We didn't really, well, we attempted to explain a little bit, uh, but we mostly wanted to amuse and entertain. We hope you find our offering acceptable. This program is arch archived at Blog Talk Radio, captured on YouTube, and I'll post the Facebook on Facebook as soon as I get them. Our mission on these Blog Talk Radio presentations is to stimulate your thinking. Prod your mind into new channels. Pop up your enth enthusiasm and interest in life. <laughs> Whether you're pro and con, we insist that you join us. As we investigate. Evaluate. And participate. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Go for it. Well, we, we want to thank you for listening to our podcast today. This program is archived at Blog Talk Radio, captured an archive for YouTube video, and linked to our Facebook. Mm. Comments are welcome. Welcome. We will return with our continuing viewpoints next Tuesday. Can can uh, okay, okay. Ch 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 <laughs> changing times uh, and uh, from a different view. Uh, the uh, forefathers uh, look for us uh, as we look at yesteryear. I'm Teresa. I'm Steve. Thank you for listening. Remember to think positive. Be positive. Live positive. Enjoy. And goodbye. See ya. <laughs> this show was brought to you by GG Blankies since 2011. Musings with Steve and Teresa are a blog talk weekly feature talking about different changing times and how it applies to you. For a complete selection of GG Blankies, please call Teresa at 740. 727-1684 Thank you for listening.